Hey there, I'm Tom Douthit, a.k.a. The Soul Man, and uh, I'm glad you've tuned in. You can be watching this uh, morning, noon, or night, doesn't matter. Um, I want you to know that we really uh, appreciate it when people share these videos. Um, as you know, leftist-dominated uh, social media uh, shadow bans and... Uh, keeps our videos from being able to be seen by people. I don't know. Uh, well, I do know why. I understand why. But anyways, they just don't like people sharing the word of God and they don't like people pointing out um, the errors of their ways. Anyways, so because of that, please share this anytime, anywhere you're able to, because people do need to hear the word of God, especially in these days and times. Uh, if you're a regular, we're continuing uh, today in Mark chapter 13. If you're new, welcome. We study the Bible uh, word by word, verse by verse, chapter by chapter through every book. And um, we're currently in the book of Mark, and today we're in chapter 13. So feel free to hit share, and um, let's dig into the Word of God. Let's open with prayer, would you? Join me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your words of wisdom, for the truth that you share with us. And we thank you mostly for your love, for your forgiveness, for your salvation, and for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we ask that you open up our hearts and minds as fertile ground for the seeds of your word to be sown. And teach us and guide us in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Please bless our study today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, this uh, video will be getting released at 11, 11 a.m. on Sunday, May 19th, the year of our Lord, 2024. So this is Mark chapter 13. So, uh, as we know, Jesus had just been teaching in the temples and, and uh, debating with the Pharisees. So as he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings, like he was, you know, he'd been to Jerusalem before and, and Jesus hadn't or something. And this, this is all new and uh, uh, amazing to him. Man, look at this. Look, look at what architecture went into honoring God with this temple and these buildings. And Jesus replied, do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Wow. Now, a little bit later, we're going to see where Jesus says these things, uh, this generation won't pass away until these things have happened. And much of what he's prophesying right here came to fruition in the year AD 70 uh, under the Roman Emperor Nero. And some of it is going to come true in our time, in the future, which is now the present and is actually starting to happen all around us. But in AD 70, the Roman Emperor Nero sacked Jerusalem, chased all the Jews out, and they were basically homeless from, 19, uh, from AD 70 until 1948, when their homeland was renamed Israel and people were Jews were brought from all over the world and reestablished in Israel, the land that had been Israel's for thousands of years, and Ezekiel 38 uh came true in that in that time frame. Um, you have to look for the dry bones being uh, gathered together, and uh, you'll see how that prophecy, if you ever want to read it, it's Ezekiel 38. But anyways, in AD 70, when Nero sacked Jerusalem, they tore down everything, and they burnt all the buildings. And when they burnt uh, the temple, all of the things that were gold in the temple melted. And some of the gold ran down the stone walls and got in between the cracks between the stones. And Nero commanded that every stone be broken apart separately. No two stones left grouted and mortared together because there could be gold in any crack anywhere. So this prophecy, Jesus said, not one stone here will be left on another. It came true in most of these guys who were listening to this lifetime. It came true maybe 35 years later, something like that. Every stone 
was separated from every other stone and they looked for every piece of melted gold between the stones. So that prophecy was fulfilled. Next, verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, uh, <laughs> that's not even a hard word. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, the, the inner three, inner circle, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the signs that they are about to be fulfilled? In other words, what signs will we look, should we be looking for so that when we see them, we know this is getting ready to happen? So Jesus says to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he and deceiving many. And as we know from that time until now, many have claimed to be a Messiah and deceived many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. And these are the beginning of birth pangs. Now, if you know anything about human childbirth, excuse me, the woman, when she first goes into labor and has her very first birth pain, labor pain, it's sharp and it's unexpected. It's like, oh my God, I just had a labor pain. And then maybe a few hours later or whenever it might be, she has another one. Oh no. And then maybe a little while later, but not quite as long, another one. And then the next one is even sooner than the gap between the last two. And then they start to say, okay, they're starting to come um, with more frequency and with more intensity. It's building up. So she knows it's time. I'm getting ready to have this baby. And she needs to get to the presence of a doctor or a hospital or wherever she's having the baby. And those birth pains begin to come more and more frequently and with more and more intensity pain until at the very last they're coming constantly and she's getting ready to have the baby and has the baby. So what Jesus is saying is when we see these signs, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes and famines in various places, that's just the beginning. It's going to get worse. And it's going to get more frequent and more intense as it gets closer. Now, there's also a parallel passage in Romans chapter 8 that also parallels this, this story of the uh, birth pains and of, of the earth uh, getting ready for the coming of our Lord. So that's another one. Ezekiel 38 and Romans chapter 8. Good reads to tie in with what we're studying today. So then Jesus says, um, you must be on your guard. You'll be handed over to local councils and flogged in the synagogues. In other words, if you say you're a Christian, you will be punished for it. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. So when you're called in and being accused of being a Christian as if that's some punishable crime, which in many places and at other times it will be, you are not to try to hide that fact. You're not to try to say, okay, maybe I'll just um, convert to whatever it is you're threatening me with, so I'm not a Christian anymore. Let me live. Jesus wants us to bear witness to him even when we're being persecuted simply for being a Christian, simply for believing in the God of truth and in the words of his truth. So on account of me, you'll be in before kings and governors and you'll bear witness to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Well, we are now living in a time where that has been accomplished. 
thanks to people like Billy Graham and others, the gospel has now been preached in every known nation, period. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Don't stress over it. Don't worry. What, what am I going to say? What, what will get me out of this? What's, what, what, what would God want me to say? Don't worry about it. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. If you're arrested for being a Christian and you stand trial before a governor or a king or a judge, and it comes time for you to bear witness or testify or, or give your side of the story, don't worry about what you will say because it won't be you speaking. In a situation like that, the Holy Spirit will fill you with his power and his truth. And you will speak the words of God as directed by God through the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I find that kind of exciting to know that God may use me in such a capacity. I hope it happens. I hope God uses me anytime and anywhere. I want to always be willing, able, and available to preach the gospel in season or out of season, when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. Brother will betray brother to death. And a father, his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Not might be, will be. Now let me ask you this. Brother against brother, betraying brother. Now we know we had things like that in, in the Civil War. Brothers fought against brothers and family members against family members because they sided on one side or the other. But here in our time, just four short years ago, we had family members and friends turning on each other over something as simple as a cloth face mask or a mandated forced experimental vaccine. People were turning on their own family members if they didn't follow the narrative and go along with the program. Could be prophecy coming true. Sure sounds like it. Then, verse 14, Jesus says, When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Now, we're talking about Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, chapter 11, verse 31, chapter 12, verse 11. The abomination that causes desolation also partly came true in AD 70. And they desecrated the temple of Jesus Christ, or of the Lord God, Jehovah. But at that time, it was already now the temple of Jesus Christ. The Jews who were unsaved and not following Jesus the Messiah just didn't understand that yet. So he says, when you see that, um, let those who are in Gia, Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the rooftop of his house go down or enter the house to take anything out. In other words, when this happens, you need to run far and fast and don't even stop to try to go inside and gather up some of your most precious belongings because none of them will matter more than your life. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. In AD 70, the Jews fled Jerusalem. They were hiding in the hills and in caves. It was a dreadful time to be a pregnant woman or a nursing mother, or any Jew for that matter. And now here we find ourselves in the year 2024 with anti-Semitism 
off the charts here in America at our supposed learning institutions, which more and more people are realizing are just indoctrination stations. They are actually hunting Jews, keeping them from going to class, trying to kick them off the campus, and in some cases, try to do them harm. Right here in America. And, and these crazy, crazy, far-left radical people are the ones who accuse Trump and his followers of being Hitler and Nazis. Yet these people are the ones who are willing to hate the Jews. They're supporting Hamas, a terrorist organization that does horrible things to people, innocent people, because they have no clue what truth is. They've been deceived and manipulated by ideological leftist radical activist professors and teachers. And it's sad, but it's true and it's happening right now here in America. And as you can see, this is one of the reasons Facebook won't let me go live anymore on there. And amaz um, 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 eventually maybe YouTube, owned by Google and also very leftist dominated, could try to shut down Bible teachings like this one. But for now, I'm live. Share this. Please share this message. So then he says, pray that this will not take place in winter because those will be days of distress unequaled from the beginning of the world when God created the world until now and never to be equaled again. That's pretty bad. This is key right here, verse 20. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, those who've asked God to forgive them and accepted his atoning death as a sacrifice to pay the price for their own sins, those people, the elect... Be for the sake of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ or the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect even if that were possible. Wow. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. Now again, this is two-part prophecy. Much of this was fulfilled in AD 70. But some of it is yet to be fulfilled and actually being fulfilled as we live and breathe right here in the year 2024. In verse 24, he goes on to say, but in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. That's some serious stuff going on in all of creation, in what we call our universe. God will be moving with power and might. And there will be no question as to whether it's God or whether he's moving. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, to the ends of the heavens. That's the rapture. That's when Jesus comes back in power and glory. And he has his angels gather up every Christian. Whether they've already dead and they're in the heavens. Or whether they're alive 
and they're anywhere on earth, they will all be gathered together to meet Jesus in the air. 1 Thessalonians. Now, learn this lesson from the fig tree, Jesus told them. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, these things I've just described to you, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Pay attention. If you are not saved, if you have not accepted that Jesus Christ is God and that he died to forgive you for your sins, you're lost and your time is running short. Now is the time. Today is the day to ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins, past, present, and future, and to come into your heart and take up residence in your life. Fill you with the Holy Spirit. Be one of the elect. Be caught up with Jesus. He said, if it wasn't for God cutting our time short, those who are the elect, we wouldn't survive. So he's cut our time short and snatching us out of here in the middle, at the beginning or the middle, of this great tribulation that's heading our way. Then he says, um, okay, so even so, when you see these things happening, you know the time is near, it's right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation, or this race, otherwise translated, will not pass away, certainly, until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So what he's saying is the, the generation of people that were alive at that time would not pass away before AD 70 happened. And the human race will not pass away before all of these things happen. And even when God rearranges the heavens and destroys the earth by fire, First to second Peter. Even when the earth and the heavens pass away, God's words will not. God's word, Jesus, the word of God, the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word is Jesus. God's word will not pass away no matter what happens on earth or in the heavens. God's word is eternal. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews. Now, verse 32, as he closes this teaching, he says, no one knows about that day or hour. No one knows exactly what day or what hour. Anytime you hear a preacher or a false prophet or someone say, Jesus is coming back on September 23rd, 1989. Eh. No one knows the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the sun. Now that's Jesus in the human body. Jesus, the spirit of God after he dies and resurrects, he knows what's happening. He knows what is coming. But even Jesus, while he was there as a human, didn't know when exactly all this will happen. But he knows it will happen. So if they don't know, how can some stupid human think he knows? You can't. Sometimes I think God has a big calendar in the sky and all these days, and he's thinking, okay, I'm going to come back on that day. That's that's my plan, I think. And then some guy on earth goes, Jesus is coming back on September 23rd, 19... Uh, eh, I guess not. I'm, I'm, I'll do it this day instead. None of us will ever be right if we try to claim what day God's coming back. We don't know. We can't know. And we won't know until, bam, it happens. I mean, it could happen in the middle of one of my teachings. I, I, all of a sudden, this screen could be a blank backdrop and my hat and glasses just fall to the ground. 
It could happen tomorrow, next week, next month, 20 years from now, 12 years from now, two years from now. We don't know. But I can tell you this. Jesus said, when you see these signs, you know the time is near and we are seeing the signs. The birth pains have started. Now, how long they'll go until they get so intense that the end pops? We don't know. We don't know how far along we are, but I can tell you this. It has started. The end times are now. We are living in what the Bible calls the end times. Whether it's the very beginning of the end times or the middle or almost to the tribulation and the rapture, I don't know. We can't know, but we can pay attention. And he asks us to pay attention. It's coming and it's coming soon. He says this, so no one knows except the father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. But he's saying, don't just not worry about it. Don't just go on about life as if you don't care. Be on guard. Be ready. Be alert. When you see the signs, know it's coming. And actually, when you see the signs, if we are, and you know it's coming, which we do, now more than ever, it is so important to witness, to Everyone you know and love, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Whew. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and he tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or at the crack of dawn when the rooster crows. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. Now that doesn't mean we can't sleep eight hours a day at night. That's not what he means. He means don't be saying, okay, thank God I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I'll never have to worry about that again. I just know that whenever he comes back, I'll be one of them. No, no. He wants you all day, every day to be serving the Lord. Remember, we have been called as ambassadors for Christ. It's our job. Some of us are more powerful or more, more um, public in our preaching and teaching, but every one of us is called to be a witness daily to the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Jesus ends this teaching by saying, what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. That's what Jesus is telling us right now. Right now. In May of 2024, watch, pay attention, be alert, be on guard, be serving Jesus Christ, be telling people about their need for Jesus Christ to be in their life. Everyone we know and love needs Jesus Christ in their life. Anyone who does not have Jesus Christ in their life is not saved. I know if you're listening to my voice that there's a really good chance that someone or someones that you know and love, family, friends, co-workers, are not saved. And you don't want the time to come when they say, why didn't you tell me? If it was this important, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you tell me that Jesus is God and that I'm a sinner in need of salvation and that Jesus' death on the cross was voluntary and willing and it was an atonement and his death, his innocent blood being shed paid the price for my sins a price I cannot pay on my own. 
People you know and love need to hear that message. So I challenge you, go out this week and be a witness for Jesus Christ because the time is short and Jesus is coming soon. God loves you. So do I. I'll see you right back here next week for Mark chapter 14. Share, share, share the word of God.